Hopefully you're coming towards the end of your cat pat as the deadline is looming. But here are five cat pat tips that can help you, particularly with your phase three website. If you follow these steps, it'll help you get those little extra marks that you might have left out. So let's go check them out. Cat pat tip number one. If you haven't done your website yet, best tip to start off with is to make sure that you make the first page perfect. Focus on that first page, make it sure that it looks exactly the way you want to so start off with the page, put in your headings, put in your navigation structure, put in a couple of paragraphs and images and things like that. Maybe you want a horizontal line and maybe you want to change the background color. Make sure the page is perfect in the way it looks with regard to the fonts and the colors and the layout. And once you've got that first page done, you're going to copy it twice so that you've got two other versions of that page and then you're going to rename the one data and the other one findings or whatever your other two pages are going to be. That first page is going to be your home page and the other two pages are going to be exactly the same as your home page, but you've just renamed them differently. And then you go into, for example, your data and you change it to be the way that you want it to be for the data page. Now you don't have to worry about the fonts and the colors because the format is exactly how you want it to be. And then you can add in some extra labels, some extra headings, some extra paragraphs, some, some extra content. And then you do the exact same for the findings page with the idea being you don't need to change what it looks like so much, but just the content. And that way you'll save a lot of time, but you'll also make sure that in your rubric, you get that first mark where it's not only attractive and a usable layout, but you have a consistent appearance because all your pages have the same look and feel, which makes it professional. Then cat pat tip number two, you need to make sure that you've got consistent navigation across all your pages. So you want a way that you can go between the different pages, have a nice little menu structure. And this is what I would do on that first page when you're making it perfect is to create a table that's going to contain your navigation structure. And we are only going to keep it in one row because I like my menu to go across the top of the screen. And so we'll keep it in that one row and we're going to make one cell and that cell is going to represent that first menu option. You can change the background color to whatever you want it to be. And then around that, we're going to put the link to which website it is. Now, if you're doing this on the first page, it's probably going to link to itself because it is the home page. So you put in the link around it and then maybe you want to change the font, maybe change the color or the style. I'll put that around the link and then you're going to take that block and you're going to copy it twice and paste them over here and that's going to create two new cells that are also going to be called home and also be going to the home page but these are the ones that we're going to edit that home web address we're going to change to whatever the name is of your second page that text over there is going to be what is displayed so for example if it's our data page then we're going to change it to data.html if that's the name of your web page and then whatever the text is and then we'll do the same for the other cell and change that to finance if you are doing this on your first page then you probably haven't created those web pages yet but just take note of what you're calling them because when you copy this page like we said in cat pat tip one you must rename it to those names and then your navigation structure will work and then you can go and edit the background color maybe you want each menu option to have a different color maybe you want them to have different fonts it's up to you you can change that as you see fit and then if you want you can take away the border if you don't want to make it look like a table so it just looks like floating blocks that can make it look really nice and that way you'll create that navigation structure there at the top. And then all your hyperlinks should then work. And then you'll get that last mark for a consistently placed navigation system throughout your web page. And then cat pat tip number three is to use your tag sheet. Do you remember when you write your cat exams, you get that little tag sheet at the back of your exams? Well, go get one and go look at it and make sure that you are checking it to see that you've got all the tags throughout your three web pages. You don't have to have them in every single page, but they must occur somewhere within the three pages. So for example, there at the bottom, you've got your ordered list and unordered lists. Make sure that you've included that somewhere in one of your pages. Make sure that you've got images. Make sure that you, maybe you've got a horizontal rule. Make sure that you've got your table structure, very similar to what we mentioned in cat pad tip number two. What about the links? Maybe you want links to other web pages. Maybe you want links to other parts of the same web page. In other words, go into a bookmark, go look at your tag sheet and make sure that you're getting as many of the different types of tags in your web pages. Remember, you're trying to show off all your skills. So show off all your skills. And then cat pad tip number four, make sure that you reference your images. You must have referencing in your web pages. If you look over here, they're asking for three acknowledgements in the correct format, and they're asking for easy to locate citations. So make sure that you are adding that to your web page. You can do that in the form of including your bibliography somewhere from your report, go and creating that as part of one of the web pages, but then make sure that you include little citations as well that link to it. Another way you could do this is by using some inspiration from Wikipedia. 
So if you look, whenever they have text, they have those numbers at the end of the text. And that tends to reference a site that they mentioned further down under their references. So there you can see that one is related to that one over there. So you could do something like that where you have your references for that particular page at the bottom and then just include little numbers so that they know which one refers to which reference. But most of the time people forget about this one. And that is we referencing your images or any graphics or graphs. Where did you get them from? So this is what I suggest you do. If you have your image just by itself, then you might want to include a little caption below the image and include the reference there. Now to do that, you just have your image, whatever it is, and then you're going to put a BR track or break. So it puts it on a new line and then you put in your text that you want to put and maybe mention the source in brackets. If you want to make sure that it's a little bit smaller, then you can put a font tag around it and make sure that the size is like a very small number like one. So it's a very small piece of text. If you're using an image that you generate from AI, you must still reference that by saying which AI generated it and what the prompt is. But again, if you're going to use AI generated images, first check with your teacher if they allow it. If they're not happy with you using it, then don't use them. Rather use ones that you found online. Another option if that caption is going to be too long is to maybe just leave the caption as just the details of that image. And then using these tags, you are going to put the source in comments. Now the comments are not visible on the main page. However, if they go view the source, they will be able to see where you got that image from. And then it's not clogging up your web page. However, if you are doing this, I would strongly suggest that include a little note at the bottom of your web page that is visible, that image sources are mentioned in the source page, and that'll appear at the bottom so that people know that if they want to know where you got your images, they must just go view the page source. Now, what happens if you've got an image with some text next to it explaining what's happening in the image? This is a little bit more complicated, but still doable. What we can do is we're still going to put a caption at the bottom of the image, but we need to put this in some sort of table that we're going to make invisible. To do that, we're going to create a table and we don't want them to see the table. So we're going to make the border zero and we're going to make one row. And then we're going to make one little cell, maybe make the width about 20%. And that's going to refer to that column there where we're going to put our image and caption. And there you can put in your image, give it a particular width, and then still using a break tag so that it starts a new line, you put your caption. And because of the break, it'll put it underneath the image. And you can change the font to that if you so wish. And then in another block, you'll put your text and that text will go next to the image. And that will help you if you're trying to lay out your images and text next to each other. And then last cat pad tip number five is other tags. In the rubric, there's a special part where you have to demonstrate tags that are not in the curriculum, things that you haven't been taught, things that are not in the tag sheet. So I've created a video that can help you exactly with that. There I cover four tags that you probably haven't been taught. That includes the marquee tag, which allows text to scroll across your screen. The Dell tag, if you're trying to strike out any text, the mark tag if you want to highlight any text or the iframe, which is really useful for displaying a YouTube video in your web page. If you can find a YouTube video that's related to your topic or related to the information, then you can actually have that YouTube video that you can view in your page. You only need two of them. So go look at that video. It'll tell you exactly how to do any of those four. So to recap. So number one, make your first page perfect and then you'll make two copies. It'll make your formatting a lot easier. Create a consistent navigation. Get it right on the first page, put it in a nice little table and that way it'll work across all your pages. Use the tag sheet to check that you've got all the tags that you've learned throughout your cat career. Make sure you're making references, especially those images that people forget about. And don't forget to check out that video of mine for those other tags. And there we go. There you should have the last few tips that you need to wrap up your cat pat. So do them now and make sure you get all those marks. Good luck cat students. Don't forget that if you're a cat student, you need to make sure that you subscribe to the channel and make sure that you share us with your friends. And don't forget to follow us on TikTok at Mr. Long Education and our other channel at Mr. Long Computer Terms. And remember, don't do it the long way, do it the Mr. Long way.